Good evening and welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for this public hearing tonight. Uh, this is a public hearing for an Eagle application to construct a seaplane turntable platform in Berrien County. Uh, my name is Ryan Blazik. I'm with Eagle's Environmental Support Division. I'm gonna be helping to moderate the public hearing tonight. Uh, but before we get started, I just have a couple logistical things. Uh, and one thing I wanted to mention is the wind is howling pretty good, I think, for a lot of us tonight. So if we have any technical issues, please bear with us. But everything seems to be working just fine. Um, this is the agenda for tonight. I'm going to go through here this really quickly, um, going through the introduction right now. Uh, but the big thing is there's kind of two parts uh, to the public hearing tonight. There's going to be an informational session uh, where the applicant has provided and will give about a 10-minute presentation. Uh, on the project, followed by some question and answer, so you have a chance to ask some questions about it. And then after we get through the informational session, uh, it'll be about, uh, about a 10 minute presentation followed by Q&A. We'll try to wrap up by around 6.30, 6.35 Q&A, so we can move on to the official hearing portion. And that's where you'll have a chance, everyone here will have a chance to make a comment um, on the project and official comment for the record as part of this hearing. Uh, and then we'll also talk about uh, ways to find other information and who to contact for further questions. A uh, couple of logistical things uh, for those who aren't familiar with Zoom or how we've done these public hearings. Uh, all lines are muted uh, during this public hearing. So you'll be able to hear us, but we can't hear you. Uh, during the question and answer session, you can submit your questions using the question box in the Zoom toolbar. Uh, you can actually ask questions before we get to that point um, and we'll uh, address those when we get to the Q&A session. Um, then we're also recording this meeting. Uh, so this will be on our YouTube channel here in a couple days um, for you to watch again or to share. All right, at this point, I'd like to invite our other Eagle staff, Kyle Alexander and Riley Walsh to introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Riley Walsh. I work in the Kalamazoo District Office in the Eagle Water Resources Division. Um, I am reviewing this application and I will be the hearings officer tonight. Thank you all for being here. And I'm Kyle Alexander. I also work in the Kalamazoo District Office. I'm the supervisor for the Water Resource Division. So work with, with Riley and, and yeah, thanks everyone for attending. Yeah, thanks Riley and Kyle. All right, so we're gonna start the uh, informational session with the presentation. Uh, William Pater, the applicant, uh, has provided this presentation and uh, we're gonna find William uh, as one of the participants and unmute him so he can uh, go through this. Let's see here. All right, William, it looks like you're unmuted on our end. You can unmute yourself. Good evening, everyone. Uh, how do you hear me? Yep, yep, we can hear you. Uh, I guess before you get started, just a couple things is that I have your presentation. Uh, just let me know when you wanna change slides and I'll change slides for you. Uh, we're gonna try not to go over 10 minutes. So once we're at 10 minutes, um, I'll let you know you can start wrapping up your presentation. Uh, and then also just so the uh, audience knows that this is an a presentation provided by the applicant and doesn't necessarily represent uh, Eagle's views. So with that, you can go ahead and take it away and get started whenever you're ready. Okay, abbreviated presentation. Slide one, please. William Pater, 8327 Terrace Avenue. The proposal is for a 20 by 20 boat hoist. Slide two, please. Outline, we'll go over criteria, explanation of the lift, environmental impact, navigability, repairing survey, aerial maps, address comments, alternatives, and conclude with supporting documents. This presentation will address all three EGLE criteria. One, unlawful impact of environment. Two, cannot interfere with navigability or neighbors riparian rights. Three, feasible and prudent alternatives. Next slide, please. Individual permit application for boat hoist includes four piling and a 20 by 20 square. Boat cradle has two bunks and two rails mounted atop a 16 foot diameter rotatable fixture called a turntable. 
the surrounding catwalk, which the applicant has called a platform, but is more accurately described as a walkway. The catwalk itself is a minimal walkway as described by Eagle in minor projects for boat hoist. I intend to meet all walkway requirements as described by Eagle. Next screen, please. Cross section shows the proposed structure from a side view. Pilings are tied together by beams attached to four uprights connecting to the cradle, lowered with cantilever action for vessel access. Updated March 29th, lake level was 622 feet elevation, measured depth 43 inches and lakeward side 58 inches. Cradle will be stored in upright position. Next slide, please. Video demonstrating proposed hoist rotating with craft. Craft is positioned securely between two fixed bunks and squarely on center of hoist. Mechanism rotates about center point 180 degrees, positioning craft lakeward. Now the tail of the craft is securely protected above existing platform of current dock. The craft can now be properly secured to the rigid structure below with heavy duty straps attached to wings and tail. Departure, the craft can safely navigate straight ahead between riparian boundaries. Next slide, please. Environmental impact, same as boat hoist, constructed of four wood piling, an aluminum structure, and two wood bunks. Next slide, please. Clarification, not an application for the use of a seaplane. Michigan Senate law states environmental impact for a seaplane is under jurisdiction of aeronautics code. Repeat, this is a permit application for a boat hoist not an application for the right to land, take off, navigate, dock, or store a seaplane. Next slide, please. Navigability. See the aerial shot to scale using Google Earth. Notice proposed extension relatively in line with neighboring docks. Subject dock relatively centered between the neighbors to the right and to the left. Next slide, please. For the record, the applicant consulted renowned safety expert, Harry Munns. Attached thereof is Harry's resume, and an opinion letter to the navigability as it relates to the proposed boat hoist. Next slide, please. Lapham Associates Riparian Survey attached to the Eagle application and filed at the Register of Deeds. Next slide, please. Professional Riparian Drawing with 20 by 20 lift and craft shown. Craft is centered between neighbor's docks to the left and right. Hoist is 11 feet from east riparian boundary and 27 feet from west riparian boundary. Craft is 3 feet from east boundary and 20 feet from west boundary. When parked, craft is not lakeward of hoist. The dotted line shows most outward position when rotating. Clearly, the drawing shows the craft can remain in boundaries during access, docking, and storage. The footprint of the craft is larger than the hoist, but this effect is seasonal. The craft will be stored when not accessing the property. Next slide, please. Docking of the vessel is consistent, repeatable, and secure. Pilings secure the boat hoist to the bottomlands, ensuring that the boat hoist does not move. Bunks position the vessel into the same location at each docking. Straps prevent the vessel from movement. Next slide, please. Commenter's question, will proposed hoist adversely affect the surrounding environment? This Google Earth photo shows neighborhood docks one through seven. Applicant stock is four. Next slides, compare the structures. Next slide, please. Dock one, platform red, 491 square feet. Boat lift, yellow, 324 square feet. Water depth at end of dock, 82 inches. Length, 98.5 feet. This is the longest dock and the most exposed to boat traffic. Next slide, please. Dock two, platform, 489 square feet. Seasonally observed boat lifts, yellow, 550 square feet. Dock length, 80 feet. Water depth, 68 inches. This dock has the largest observed seasonal footprint. Next slide, please. Dock three, platform 631 square feet, permanent boat lift 625 square feet, length 81 feet, water depth 63 inches. Dock is largest overall footprint, 1,257 square feet, all of which is permanent structure. From repairing survey and plat section 14, town three, South Range 17 West, this property is 46 feet at Lakeshore and measures 
84.4 feet of riparian proration at the center line of lake. Therefore, based on the width of their permanent structure and vessels observed, it is estimated it uses 95% of a riparian width to park vessels, and the structures make up 65% of riparian width at end of dock. These percentages are much larger than the applicants as proposed. Next slide, please. Dock 5, 786 square feet, boat slip 300 square feet, length 76 feet, water depth 53 inches. This dock has the largest permanent platform. Next slide, please. Dock 6, 156 square feet, boat lift 324 square feet, length 72 feet, water depth 61 inches. Not pictured, observed seasonal swim platform, 80 square feet, anchored lakeward of all current structures, including the longest dock. The seasonal impact of the swim platform makes it the most obstructive object during the season. Next slide, please. Dock 7, platform 327 square feet, boat lift 324 square feet, length 51 feet, depth 108 inches. This dock is in the deepest water. Next slide, please. Eagle states the length from the shoreline or size of the proposed structure is not greater than the length or size of similar structures. Dock 4A is neither the largest or the longest, nor is it in the deepest water. Comparing the applicant's proposed structure to surrounding docks, its proposed hoist is relatively modest use of percentage of riparian area. Next slide, please. Applicant's dock 4, referred to as 4A, platform 192 square feet, boat lift 400 square feet, proposed dock length 91 feet, water depth 43 inches and 58 inches lakeward, not pictured 48 square feet of seasonal footprint, wings of the craft. Next slide, please. Visual comparison, covered boat lift and seaplane. Next slide, please. Craft stands 10 feet tall. Impact is seasonal. Compare these permanent structures on Pawpaw Lake, estimated 13 to 15 feet tall. Next slide, please. Commenters, use airport. It's a grass strip not designed for amphibious floats. In perfect conditions can be used for storage. Airport can be dangerous and inaccessible after rain. Hangar is for storage only. Storage is different than access and enjoyment. Other riparian owners are not required to remove their watercraft from the lake and place it in storage after each use. Addressing a few public comments, applicants saved all upland trees for eagle habitat. Hoist will be restricted for private use. Craft is equipped with muffler part number 0750161. Zero Pilot can hear with window open, headsets off. Forward thrust only. See safety expert Harry Munn's letter. And note, craft is equipped with anchor and a paddle. Craft can sail directionally. It is not a requirement that the craft can be used in all conditions, just like the boats. Hoist can be used in the winter with plowed snow ramp. Pilot can't see. Just not true. 17 riparian owners is less than 1% of lake owners. Applicant does not have the right to store the plane at the house and must do environmental survey. See Michigan Senate bill regarding seaplanes. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Commenters, use airport. It's a grass strip not designed for amphibious. I intend to use the full plane on water. There is a difference between amphibious floats and straight floats. The proposed boat lift can handle both. As the owner and pilot of the aircraft, I have the authority to choose what type of floats to use. Straight floats do not have the ability to land on any surface except water. Next slide, please. Commenters, remote storage at end of bay. This property is not owned by the applicant, does not provide access. This suggests that the commenter is fine with the vessel on the lake, just not in their backyard. Next slide, please. Alternatives, boat lift without a turntable. This does not change seasonal footprint, does not change length of dock, does not change position of hoist, but requires operator to manually turn the craft, which is not safe. At this location, the turntable adds a level of safety that should not be compromised. Next slide, please. Alternative, park craft upland. Craft will use shown channel, requires launch ramp, some more turntable, Hill must be excavated for flat space and a permanent cover to protect the craft from trees. Next slide, please. 
For the record, letter from Waterville Township, no ordinances that restrict seaplane use. Email Michigan Aeronautics Commission, no restrictions on Pawpaw Lake. Letter from safety expert, Harry Munns, hoist does not obstruct navigability. Pawpaw Lake Association failed to pass motion to become involved. Next slide, please. Thank you all for listening. That concludes the presentation. Thank you. All right. Thank you for providing the presentation here for the information session. Uh, we're going to move right into the question and answer session. So uh, I've got some instructions here. There's actually two ways that you can do this if you have a question. And just to clarify, this is for questions and answers. The part where you make your statement for the record, the public hearing portion is going to be after this. So hold, hold your comments until that portion. But if you have a question, feel free to either raise your virtual hand in Zoom and you'll see that uh, with the, on the bottom of the screen, you, will, you can type your question in the question and answer box. Uh, or if you're on the phone, uh, I'm not sure if we have any phone callers. Uh, looks like there are a couple. If you're on the phone and you'd like to ask a question, you can select pound two. And what that will do is raise your hand in Zoom and then when we unmute you, you'll be able to make your comment. So uh, go ahead and take a couple minutes to either type that in or raise your hand. I don't have any, uh, let's see here. Okay, I've got a comment, a couple comments are popping in and it looks like I have one hand raised. So I'll go ahead and ask um, one or two of these comments and then I'll go to the raised hand. Uh, has the applicant provided any information about the noise levels that the proposed action will entail? That seems like a good question to send to Mr. Pater if you'd like to answer that. All right. Looks like you're unmuted on our yes. end. Okay. Yep. Yep. The uh, the seaplane's been on the lake for the last 12 years. And there's never been a complaint on the noise level of the seaplane. It's only used during the daylight hours, usually uh, during um, at, at times when, when people are awake. All right, thank you for that. Um, and then uh, this, this might be another one too, but it was, it was mentioned that this is a boat lift. Is this the case or is this lift specifically for a plane? Yes, um, I'm not aware of any requirements by Eagle on what type of craft uh, the lift that uh, um, you have to provide that information. Uh, many people sell their boat and buy a different craft. The plane is defined as a vessel when it's on the water and the, uh, the, the lift is being designed to accommodate the plane. Okay, yeah, thanks for providing that information. I'm gonna go to uh, a raised hand right now. Uh, Patrick Kennelly, uh, we're gonna unmute you and then you can unmute yourself and go ahead and ask your question. So it looks like you're unmuted. You can go ahead whenever you're ready. Uh, just a quick question on the format of that presentation. Was that an actual speaker speaking or was it um, computer generated? That's my only question. Yes, sir. That that was that was me. I I, I generated that uh, presentation. That's my voice. All right. Thank you. Uh, I've got a couple other here questions in the question and answer. Um, there are occasionally one or two other planes that come in and out of the lake. Is this the same plane? I'm not sure if if we can comment on that or not. Yeah, that seems probably outside the scope of yeah. what we're here to talk about today. Yeah, I don't know. It, it wouldn't be possible to answer that question. Um, let's see. And then I have a, uh, I don't know if it's a question or a comment. Looking for decibels within 150 feet. I mean, guess as far as how loud. Um, yeah, um, when, when the plane is taxiing at idle, it's quieter than most boats. Thank you. Are there any other questions? I'll give it a couple more seconds here. I'm not seeing any other questions at this point. 
Yes, going once. Okay, here we have uh, a couple more. Uh, we have a raised hand. Uh, Kent Walsack, uh, we're going to unmute you and you go ahead and ask your question. All right, you're unmuted on our end, Kent. Okay. How about hey, Here it's we... Kent Walzak. I've lived on the lake for about 42 years. I'm also a pilot and a boater. I don't see what the difference is. Bill has lived about a half mile from his uh, perspective location for the last 12 years and has operated that plane in and out of there successfully. I don't know what the, the, the problem is with him moving a half a mile away, still operating the plane in the same location. I mean, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the difference is, so. Do you, do you have a question or is that the question? Well, I mean, I'm just making a statement there. I'm just making a statement. It seems like this is a major uproar here and I'm not sure why. I mean, Bill used to live a half a mile away. He operated the plane in and out of there successfully for 12 okay. years. Now he's moving. Everyone knew okay. that he was I mean, taking the plane with him. I don't know what the problem is. So, All right. so yeah. this, is, this is actually a question and answer session. So you'll have an opportunity in a little bit to make a statement. Uh, and basically make any, any statement you'd like related to the project. But I'm gonna try, okay, I'm gonna try to get, yep, no problem. I'm gonna go, to, go ahead and try to get to some more questions because we have a couple more popping in, but thank you. Um, question is how will the plane be fueled? When, when the airplane's at the airport, I, I fuel it at the airport and the airplane does run on aviation fuel. Okay, thank you. Uh, another one here, and then I've got a couple raised hands. Uh, is the lift able to be seen above water when the plane is not on it, or is it submerged out of view? Yeah, the boat lift is just like any other boat lift on the lake. So other boat lifts on the lake, when they are submerged for access, for the watercraft to access to water, they're out of view. The lake clarity is probably four to five feet that you can see into the water. So any other boat lift on the lake would have the same result when it goes into the water that this boat lift would have. Uh, it's my plan to store the boat lift out of the water when it's not being used. All right, thank you. Um, we're gonna go to some of the raised hands. Uh, Jessica Jewell, we're gonna uh, unmute you and, you're, and then you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Right, we can hear you. Hello, um, I just had a question. Have there been any complaints to Eagle um, before this boat lift um, in reference to Bill Pater with his aircraft um, as far as noise, just out of curiosity? I Have you received? Okay. So uh, Eagle isn't the official body that receives noise complaints. Um, that would, that's not something that would come to us. We're here today to talk about the environmental impact of the platform and issues pertaining to part 301 of the Natural Resources and Environmental Protection Act. So that, okay. that isn't something that would come to Eagle. Gotcha. Okay. Sounds great. Know. I just, it was brought up earlier about the noise. So I had just wondered if there had been any previous complaints, but thank you for clarifying. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for your question. All right, and then uh, we have another uh, hand raised. Uh, Susan Goodsir, we're going to unmute you and then you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Yeah, hi, thanks. Um, thanks for the presentation. You, you shared a lot of numbers, so I'm sorry if I didn't grasp them all. Um, I'm trying to understand uh, in comparison to the other boat docks, you know, and the lift that you'd be putting in, does this go outside of the current regulations around what size boat docks and lifts we're allowed to have on Papa Lake? Are we doing something outside the norm here? I can take a stab at that. I, I mean, generally speaking for boat lifts, there, there are no dimensions that are set in the statute. Um, it's really, you know, those are really evaluated on a case by case, um, case specific basis. What about the dock itself though, that supports that? Is it within the current? I thought there were regulations. I've been trying to do a bigger dock for years. And so this is very interesting to me. 
Yeah, and generally speaking, with any project that we evaluate under Part 301, we're going to look at opportunities to, to help an applicant achieve their project purpose um, in the least impactful way possible. So um, minimizing impacts to the resource. So that may mean a, a dock that is the, the minimum width required um, to access the lake. It may be a platform that's the, the minimum square footage necessary. And the same would be applied to, to boat lifts and other uh, structures as well. But so there, are, we there, going, are we going over yeah. the maximum is what I'm trying to figure out here? Just the, the, Right, that's what I'm saying. There, there isn't really, uh, there isn't a set in stone maximum or minimum. It's really a case by case um, situation where we're always looking to, to minimize impacts with each application that we review. And I, I have I'm a similar go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Ryan. I was just going to say, I have a similar question in the chat. Is, can other landowners build similar platform structures? And I think that kind of addresses that question yeah, as well. I, well you're right. Same, same, same thing, Ryan. It's a case by case. Uh, when an application comes in, we look at what the project purpose is. Um, and we you know, evaluate again, that against the criteria that are laid out in statute. And then we'll make a decision. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for your question, um, and thanks for the answer, Kyle. All right, I don't have any other hands raised. I got a couple more questions in the chat here. Okay. Uh, even with an unobstructed path, how does the pilot plan on landing and approaching the lift perpendicular to, bo to the boat traffic? Yes. Um, so the boat traffic on the lake is not limited. The, um, the small boats and the large boats, including the kayakers and the larger boats, can use the entire lake. So the, uh, the plane uh, generally uses the center of the lake for landing. Uh, and that's, that's been done for the last 12 years. To access the lift, the plane would come in at uh, a, a straight uh, facing the shoreline towards the lift. So the, the plane itself taxis at less than two miles an hour. It can be slowed to one mile an hour. That's approximately one and a half feet per second. Equipped with an anchor and a paddle can stop at approximately 10 feet. Uh, there's good visibility. Uh, approximately 2,000 feet in every single direction. Plane has the ability to turn and stay out of the way of any craft that um, would uh, have the right of way. And the uh, applicant's not asking for, there was a comment about a taxiway. Uh, a taxiway is actually an aviation term that gives the airplane the right of way. Uh, I'm asking for a boat lift and I operate the plane uh, by yielding to the watercraft that have the right of way. Okay. Yeah, thank you for the question and, uh, and for the answer. Um, uh, is the plane for personal use only uh, or commercial? That is correct. It's just uh, for personal use only. It's to access the property. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, how much does the wingspan extend over the platform? Yes, the platform is uh, 20 feet wide. The wingspan is 36 feet wide. So if you take the difference, which is the, in the plane is centered on the platform. So there's an eight foot overhang on each side of the platform. And the wings are approximately between two and four feet wide, depending upon if you're at the wing tip or closer to the fuselage. So there's approximately 48 feet, square feet of a seasonal impact where the wings overhang the 20 by 20 bolt lift when the plane is on the lift. Okay, thank you for the question and answer. Um, let's see here. In the down position, 
does this dock extend any further into the lake than the surrounding docks? And that's the second part, I guess, are there any boat navigational safety issues that would be of concern when the plane is away from the dock? I think that question would be best directed uh, to the Michigan Aeronautics Commission. They're in charge of all the regulations for seaplanes. However, I did hire a navigation and safety expert, Mr. Harry Munns. I put that uh, opinion letter uh, in my file and anyone can access it. Okay, I think that's the second part of the question. Can anybody comment on the first part? Or, or do you feel that addresses the first part? The first part is, does the dock extend further into the lake than surrounding docks? Oh, okay, negative. Uh, I did a outline on the three docks to the west and the three docks to the east. The dock that extends out the furthest is three docks down to the west. It's 98.5 feet in length, and it sticks out into the lake an additional nine feet past the proposed uh, boat lift. Okay. Yeah, thank you for the question and answer. Um, I think we have time for about one more before we move on to the next part. There's a, a lot of questions in here, but we're not going to be able to get to them all. Uh, have there been any, any incidents on the lake with the plane? Yes. In 2014, uh, the airplane, uh, I, I landed the plane, the gear was down and the plane skidded and, and then it uh, submerged itself. Uh, it's on file at the FAA. There was no injuries, no damage. Okay, all right, thank you for that. And thank you for all for putting the questions in the Q&A box. I'll also forward these on any remaining ones we didn't get to, to our staff. Um, but we need to move on to make sure we give everybody a chance and have plenty of time to uh, go through comments. So with that, we'll move on to uh, the public hearing portion. Uh, but I also want to identify other ways to submit an official comment in case you didn't want to make a statement tonight. Um, you can do that through My Waters. Um, and there is the it's submission number. For those on the phone, I'm just going to read the submission number and also identify this was in the public notice. It's submission number HPD-TEHK-N15W6. Uh, so that's through my waters, that's a submission number, or by mail at Eagle Water Resources Division, Kalamazoo District Office, 7953 Adobe Road, Kalamazoo, Michigan, 49009. Uh, and the comment period after the public hearing will be open for 10 days, which is through April 24th. Um, and so these are other ways in case you didn't wanna make a comment tonight, or if you wanna make additional comments after you make your comment, um, there's alternatives for that. So with that, we are going to move to the uh, opening statement. So Riley, I would like to invite you to I'll make the opening statement to kick off the public hearing. Sounds good. All right, I'll read the opening statement. It is a bit long, so bear with me. Um, good evening. My name is Riley Walsh, and I am the district representative in the Water Resources Division of the Michigan Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy, or EAGLE for short. I will be serving as the hearings officer for this public hearing on EAGLE submission number HPD TEHK dash N15W6. With me tonight is Kyle Alexander, the district supervisor of the Kalamazoo district office. To describe how this is going to work tonight, I will begin with some background information about why we are here. I will then describe the purpose of the hearing and how your comments will be used. Following that, I will outline the procedures under which we will take your comments and then describe what will be happening, what will happen after tonight's hearing. It will then be time for you to provide your comments we will spend the rest of the time tonight listening to those comments. At the end of the hearing, I will read the closing statement. By way of background information, the Water Resources Division is responsible for administering a variety of programs that help protect inland lakes and streams, wetlands, floodplains, sand dunes, and the Great Lakes. These programs regulate certain activities such as dredging or filling a lake, stream, or wetland, constructing a dam, constructing a marina, placing shore protection or constructing docks, 
and building in a designated critical sand dune area, wetland or floodplain. The law governing those responsibilities is the Natural Resources and Environmental Protection Act, 1994 Public Act 451 as amended or Act 451. We are here tonight because William Pater has proposed to construct a 20 foot long by 20 foot wide platform with a 16 foot diameter rotating turntable in order to lift a float plane out of Pawpaw Lake. In order for a permit to be granted, Eagle must find that the proposed activities described in the public notice meet certain criteria set by part 301 of Act 451. In general, we must consider the impact that this structure has to the public trust and riparian rights, the environmental impact to the lake, and whether there is a less impactful alternative that still achieves the project purpose. When reviewing an application for permit under the provisions of part 301 of Act 451, Eagle is charged to make the following considerations as required by section 30106 of part 301. First, the department shall issue a permit if it finds that the structure or project will not adversely affect the public trust or riparian rights. Second, the department shall not grant a permit if the proposed project or structure will unlawfully impair or destroy any of the waters or other natural resources of the state. The purpose of tonight's hearing is to give anyone interested in William Pater's application an opportunity to provide information that Eagle can use in making the decision whether or not to issue a permit. Please recognize that Eagle can only use the information you provide if it relates to the criteria that Eagle must use in making a decision. Some of you may simply want to express your support or opposition to the float plane. And while we will be happy to make note of your position, please understand that Eagle is by law not allowed to base our decision on whether or not there is widespread support or opposition to the project. In just a moment, I will outline the procedures we will use for taking your comments. Before I do so, I will mention that the notice of this hearing was published in the March 31st edition of the Tri-City Record and on the online Eagle calendar. As we discussed at the beginning of the informational session, if you have a comment to provide, you can raise your hand in the Zoom toolbar. To ensure that the hearing is conducted in a fair manner, we will follow these steps. First, the applicant has already had an opportunity to describe the proposed project. Second, we will call on those who indicated when they registered that they would like to speak. After that, we will call on all those who raised their hand in their Zoom toolbar that would like to make a comment if they haven't already been called upon. Um, as a reminder, if you are participating in this hear hearing via telephone only, follow the directions of the moderator on how to identify that you would like to make a comment. You may also submit your comments to Eagle via My Waters, email, email, or US mail. When all of the comments have been completed, we will ask if anyone else would like to make a statement. When your name is called, your microphone will be unmuted. As you begin your comments, please state your name and any group or association you may represent. Each person will be given three minutes to make their comments. We will indicate you when you have one minute left. Please begin wrapping up your comments and end within the allotted time. If need be, we will indicate when your time has ended. I ask that all be courteous and respectful to one another tonight. Please also recognize the Eagle staff are here tonight to provide a fair opportunity for you to express your comments on the proposed project and to listen to those comments. This hearing is being recorded and your comments will be a part of the information Eagle will consider in making its decision on whether or not to issue a permit on the proposed project. The public comment period for this public hearing is open for 10 days from the date of this hearing, ending on April 24, 2022. Additional information and comments submitted in writing during the 10-day public comment period will also be considered in Eagle's decision. Following the close of the public comment period, Eagle will make a decision to either issue a permit for the project as proposed or with modifications, or will send a letter of denial. You may find out what the decision is by checking the Eagle My Waters website and searching for the application number, which again is HPD slash dash TEHK dash N15W6. Thank you for your attention. We will begin calling the names of those who have indicated that they would like to make a statement. Excellent. Thank you, Riley. Um, as Riley mentioned, uh, during registration, there was an opportunity to indicate if you wanted to make a comment. We're going to start with those. Uh, so uh, when I read your name, I'll, I'll read the first name. Um, then you will unmute you. You can make your comment similar to how we did the question and answer session. 
You'll have three minutes uh, and I'll give you a one minute warning. Again, as Riley had mentioned, or one minute heads up, I guess, um, that you're getting close to the end of time. Um, and then uh, I'll let you know when you're at your three minute mark. Uh, and I also identify who's next on the list uh, so that you have a heads up and know that your, your turn is coming up. Um, it's one uh, comment uh, period per person. And then after we get through this list and I have eight people on the list, I will start with anybody who has a raised hand. And again, if you're on the phone, you can select pound two to raise your hand. Uh, or if you're on your computer, you can select the raise hand icon to raise your hand um, to make your statement. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and get started with the list of people who identified during registration. And again, please list your name and then any affiliation you have. Uh, so the first person on, on my list is Steve Patton. And then on deck uh, after that is Scott Holdley. So Steve, we're gonna unmute you on our end. Looks like you're unmuted. You can go ahead and make your statement whenever you're ready. Great, uh, thank you for the opportunity to comment tonight. Uh, my wife and I have already filed written comments. I'm not gonna repeat those tonight, but I wanna supplement them as follows with three points. The first is just truly how unique and novel this application is. It's not just a location for the permanent storage and operation of an aircraft, but it is an area of the lake, a shoreline area that is heavily used for swimming, uh, all kinds of uses, as you know from our, our comments. It's densely developed and there's lots of, of structures there. And the argument that was made under the guise of a question earlier about the end of the lake couldn't be more different. That is not nearly as densely developed. Uh, Mr. Pater's family owns that end of the lake with only a single exception. And it's the end of the lake. We're not talking about crossing through prevailing navigational traffic in the middle of the lake. It's proceeding down the middle of the lake. So that's the first point. Um, uh, this is a unique shoreline area. Um, the second point uh, uh, adds to the comments about the safety here um, and, and, and the risk posed, both to um, structures, property, but also human life. And the incident, quite frankly, wasn't as Mr. Pater represented. I was there when it happened. He flipped his plane over. Now, fortunately, that happened in the middle of the lake. Uh, in the late fall when it wasn't being used. But if a similar, and, and the point is not whether Mr. Pater is a good pilot, even an experienced pilot can make a mistake. And if that mistake had been made at the permit location, it could have, it would have endangered human life and, um, and hit all kinds of, or potentially hit all kinds of shoreline structures. My yeah, third and minute, final point, okay, my third and final point is that zoning authorities don't allow homeowners to park their aircraft in the front yards or build hangars uh, on their property or use residential streets and highways uh, to uh, taxi their plane. This is our front yard. And by the way, the 17 people are the people impacted by this. Almost everybody adjacent to this uh, proposed use is opposing it. Um, that, that risk, uh, aircraft are different than boats. And, and that's why there are special requirements for where you can land and, and take off on them. Um, this is a public safety hazard, a navigational interference. And for all of those reasons, we urge um, Eagle to deny this permit. All right, thank you for your comments, Steve. All right, the next person up, Scott Holdley, and then after Scott is Jim Holdley. So Scott, we're gonna unmute you. Uh, you're unmuted on our end, you can unmute yourself, and it uh, looks like you're unmuted, you can start whenever you're ready. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to address um, Eagle. I've lived, at 8341 Terrace Avenue my entire life, every summer of my life. So my wife, my three children stay at our lake property all summer long. My mother is 
three doors down, my kids enjoy paddle boarding as well as riding sea doos, canoeing, and swimming back and forth between the properties. I consider Bill a very close friend of mine. I've known Bill the, my, the majority of my life. My primary concern is the safety of my family and friends. I have joined Bill on many trips in his float plane coming from his previous location, which was considerably larger. He did not have a float plane lift at his previous location. He accessed the lake via a ramp on his own property that did not interfere with any of his neighbors whatsoever. If I'm not mistaken though, Bill's also a certified flight instructor and conducted flight instruction, commercial instruction from his previous property. So he did train other float plane pilots at his previous location. So that's a concern as well. I don't know if that's his intention on a go forward basis, but having an inexperienced pilot that he's instructing flying up and off his dock is a very large concern to me. Not to mention, if my child is on a paddle board going between his grandmother's dock and our house and crosses in front of Bill's dock when he has his plane up and running with a propeller, it's essentially a meat grinder. And that scares the life out of me. There is no way that I think anyone in Eagle would jeopardize the lives of their family or friends just so one individual can have the privilege of flying a plane on and off his dock when, if I'm not mistaken, he also has hangers. Yeah, one minute left. I believe he also leases a hangar at the South Haven, Haven Airport that is a concrete runway. So regardless of the weather conditions, he could certainly take off and land from South Haven, which is 20 minutes away, if he can't access the Water Fleet hangar, which is seven minutes down the road. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the comment. All right, so next up is Jim Hoadley, uh, and then after Jim is Lawrence Holland. So Jim, we're gonna unmute you. And uh, you can unmute yourself. You can start whenever you're ready. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much. Appreciate uh, the time. And I appreciate uh, Eagle uh, for allowing this public comment forum. Um, as a previous commenter said, this really is a unique request. And let me, let me frame that a little bit for you. In speaking and trading correspondence with our attorney, um, he was recently arguing the case in Lansing at the court and had a discussion with the attorney general who is aware of this case and is really uh, interested in the Eagle decision on this. And, uh, you know, per our attorney, I don't ever recall um, an attorney general taking an interest in a single permit application case. And it speaks to the comments Steve made. This is truly unique and not something you see every day. Um, so Eagle really has a unique responsibility when it comes to the public trust and lake and waterway safety. And um, what I want to do is, is create an analogy for those on the line and for Eagle. Um, you know, when you look at this issue of permitting a device which will put lake users in harm's way, I consider it to be analogous to Eagle issuing a permit uh, which would allow people to play baseball, basketball, walk, golf, ride a bicycle, or park on a busy taxiway at, say, you know, Kalamazoo or Grand Rapids Airport. Doing so would put the public at risk, and I can't imagine that Eagle would want that to happen. Additionally, uh, a question or a comment is, what would Eagle's liability be if an incident occurred due to the, their permitting such a, a lift and an activity to occur? No one really wants to find out, and, and therefore, we request that Eagle deny the permit. Um, it, it's in the public interest to facilitate, is it really in the public interest to facilitate parking an airplane in a high-density neighborhood? You know, if approved, Eagle will essentially allow someone to land, taxi, park an airplane in the front yard of a suburban home. Uh, yeah, Eagle, shouldn't, yeah. Eagle should not set such a precedent. Um, the airplane is 36 foot wingspan, 50 foot lot, 
This is a densely populated area, uh, more akin to a suburban development than uh, a home on a two, three or 10 acre lot, as was previously the case. Uh, you know, permitting such a use um, is akin to allowing that to happen in a residential neighborhood. That's not what we should be doing. It's not what Eagle should be permitting. So we request that Eagle deny the permit for that reasons. Um, the other thing, the last comment is all of these concerns and risks can really be mitigated by using the Water Valide Airport or another airport. Bill flies in and out of the Water Airport, Water Valide Airport routinely and has a hangar there. We don't understand why there is a necessity for him to access his property via seaplane. It makes no sense. Uh, thank you very much. And I respectfully request Eagle deny the permit. Thanks for your comment, Jim. All right, uh, next up is Lawrence Holland, followed by a Lori, hopefully. So Lawrence, we're gonna unmute you. Looks like you're unmuted on our end, and then you just need to unmute yourself. And you can start when you're ready. Are you there, Lawrence? We can't, looks like your microphone is unmuted, but we can't hear you. You might need to turn the volume up on your microphone or connect a microphone potentially. I think what we'll do is we'll give you a couple minutes uh, and go through our, our next one or two and we'll come back to you, okay? We'll see if we can troubleshoot or if you're able to troubleshoot what's going on with the microphone. All right, so we'll we'll come back to Lawrence. And so we'll go uh, Lori Hoadley and then um, William Pater. So Lori, it looks like you're unmuted on our end. You can go ahead whenever you're ready. Okie doke. Hi, I'm Lori Hoadley. Thank you for letting me um, make this presentation. I would like to address Mr. Pater's what I call misrepresentation of the project location in his application, in which he says no to the question, is there subdivision plat and lot numbers? Our subdivision is Fairview, and yes, we do have lot numbers. Mr. Pater's lot number is 172, as indicated on both the Whiteman survey report and the Lampham survey that he attached in his applications. We do not live in a rural area where what someone does on their property has little to no impact and is not noticeable by one's neighbors. We live in a neighborhood with small lots. Mr. Pater's property is only approximately 50 feet wide. Living in close proximity to your neighbors obligates everyone in the neighborhood to consider the rights, safety, and well-being of all the neighbors. As such, all of the neighbors' rights, safety, and well-being, of which concern for you have already read about and heard from the statements posted in February and the concerns voiced today, all of these concerns must be considered and the collective interest of the neighborhood must take precedence over the desires of one individual. Mr. Pater's desire to taxi, park, and store his airplane within feet of his neighbor's property lines, rather than at an airport, which is one mile away and where there are no safety issues regarding swimmers, boaters, sailors, water skiers, wakeboarders, kayakers, et cetera, is just that, a desire. And it is a desire that is not in the best interests of our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you for your comment, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, before we go back to Lawrence, um, William Pater, is, is there anything else you wanted to say during this public comment period? Or did you say everything you needed to in your presentation? Looks like you're unmuted on our end. Yes, sir. Uh, just uh, thank you for the opportunity to pr present the presentation. Let me just add that the uh, Waterville Township had, had no issue with the uh, full plane being parked in my front yard for the last 10 years at the other location. 
there's no ordinances, uh, whether you can um, store, park, uh, operate a, a full plane on the lake uh, or, or put it in your, uh, in, in your yard. And again, the, uh, the plane taxi is approximately um, two feet per minute uh, at a slow, very slow speed. There's a, uh, an, an, an anchor and a, and a paddle on board. The visibility right there in that area uh, is approximately 2,000 feet in every single direction. There's great visibility. You can see uh, in any other watercraft and um, it's it's very easy to turn to uh, stay out of the way of any any craft that uh, has uh, the, the the right of way out there, and and that's uh, exactly what um, all, all the boaters on on the lake do. I did check uh, my logbook, and primarily the operation of the full plane. I usually use it mostly in the spring, in the fall. That it's a very seasonal area up on top of the hill. Uh, I've noticed this year that there's been almost no activity. Uh, most of the people are from Chicago, and most of the time that uh, I, I used a plane, which uh, last year was was 13 times uh, takeoff and landing, it occurred in the months of April, May, uh, September, and October. There was a few incidents of uh, use uh, during the middle of the uh, summer, but never during peak times. Always. Uh, you know, uh, on um, during the week or early in the morning uh, on, on a weekend. That's all. Thank you. Thanks for the comment. <clears throat> uh, we're going to go back to uh, Lawrence. Are you able to unmute your microphone? And uh, I guess we can give you another chance to see if we can get your microphone working. It's unmuted. Again, we unmuted on our end. Again, you may need to turn your microphone on or, or you maybe you don't have one that's activated. Um, but what we'll have to do is you'll have to um, make your comment via other means, you know, if you're not able to get your microphone to work. All right, it appears it's still not working. So we'll have to move on. So next up is Ken Walzak, followed by Jessica Jewell. All right, so Kent, we're gonna find you. Oh, looks like you're unmuted on our end. You can go ahead and start whenever you're ready. Hello, I'm Kent Walzak. I'm lived on the lake for 42 years. I'm a fellow pilot, fellow boater, and friend of Bill Pater's. I don't see what the difference is where Bill is moving from his previous location, which he sold, to his current location. Uh, most everyone on the lake enjoys watching the seaplane take off and land. And uh, I don't know. I mean, I feel like, Bill, if, if, if you were moving into a different area, it, in our area over here, I would embrace you uh, coming in and uh, parking your seaplane next to my pier or next to my neighbors or what have you. I just feel like that, I mean, I don't think there's a safety issue at all. I mean, I've flown with you several times and uh, I feel like there's more of a safety issue with barefooters barefooting on the lake at six o'clock in the morning at 50 miles an hour than with you like taking off and landing your plane. That's pretty much all I have to say. Thank you. All right, thank you for your comment. All right, so next up is Jessica Jewell. So we'll unmute you, Jessica. And then uh, Jessica, you're the last person on my list. So we're gonna go to the raised, raised hands after Jessica. So go ahead whenever you're ready. 
Hello, my name is Jessica Jewell, and I appreciate everyone's time tonight. Um, it's been very informative to listen to all of the questions, comments, and concerns. Um, I have lived on the lake for, gosh, 25 plus years. Um, and I have witnessed um, Bill Pater with his airplane um, numerous times, which um, I feel like we only see him in the off you know, not the non-peak times. Um, it's in the spring or the fall. You know, I don't think that it's actually possible for him to land on this lake during the 4th of July or, you know, when it's peak times where people are out and up from Chicago and all of that. Um, I do want to bring up a point, you know, uh, I had heard someone mention that, uh, you know, down at the end of the lake where he had previously had his um, airplane stored and landed and um, would leave from, is right next to a public access. Um, there's two public accesses on the lake and he is right next to a public access where he was taking off. And so I, in my opinion, I believe that, um, you know, boats coming in and out of here, it is a very high traffic area. Um, and I think if there's a boat on the lake, they're gonna go to build the place he is now, the proposed permit area and over here, if not over here more, because it's all the traffic from the people coming in and out. Um, but I do not believe that it's a concern at either area because he doesn't come during, you know, the peak times because he's not able to. He's always been extremely courteous of our friends on kayaks and boats and wave runners. Um, and as a matter of fact, we have never heard one complaint. Everyone just loves it. People stop and say, oh, can I take a picture? Like we've seen many, many people interested in a very positive way. Um, and, you know, they were mentioning that it's a, uh, you know, a want of Bill, but I also think that it's a right for him. Um, you know, we have pontoon boats, the people that live over there on the hill, they have these huge boats and, you know, a drunk person in the middle of the night or during the day on the weekends are more dangerous than Bill's airplane, in my opinion. You know, the drunk, one, young, one minute, Jessica. the drunk young people that I've witnessed firsthand almost kill myself and my family, um, you know, they are a a much bigger concern um, with the Berrien County Sheriff and everything. Bill is Bill has always been in off peak times and very courteous. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, give my two cents because I have witnessed him firsthand for many, many years. We've lived next to him. I think that uh, being next to the public access here was a very high traffic area. And um, I just uh, hope that he is given the right to have his recreational you know, watercraft, just like everyone else on the lake has their recreational watercraft at their disposal. Um, so I appreciate everyone's time once again. Um, I get, you know, the concern and it's scary for them over there to have an airplane next to them, but it's been you're next to us for years and it's been you're awesome. Just, Thank you just so to much. Say you're, at three, you're at three minutes, Jessica. Thank you. Goodbye. Thanks. Thanks for your comment. All right, uh, next person up is Kelly Hearn. Kelly, we're gonna unmute you. And again, we're going into the people who have their hand raised. So Kelly, you're unmuted on our end. You can unmute yourself and uh, start whenever you're ready. Well, I just wanted to comment that I lived over in that area of the Bay for 20 years and have kayaked. And I have six children ranging in age from five to 17. And I totally agree with Jessica that a boat has just as much of a meat grinder as a plane that very rarely takes off when any child would be swimming. I, I don't think I've ever seen that plane out there when any of my six children have been swimming because that one, he wouldn't put himself in that position to harm anyone or harm his plane. And it's, it would be impossible for him to take off and land at that time. So having, I don't live in that part of the lake anymore. I still do own property on the lake, but I have never felt that safety was an issue with my kids being near it because it was in the off season. And I am far more concerned with my kids and people not seeing them from a pontoon boat or a ski boat that is watching a skier than a plane who is solely focused on docking his boat and not damaging it. Thanks. Thank you for your comment. All right, so the next 
hand I have raised is Scott Holdley, but before we unmute you, Scott, just so you know, we can only take one comment per, per person. So unless you have somebody else on the line who would like to speak, we won't be able to take additional comments from you. So you're unmuted on our end. You can unmute yourself. Is there somebody else there? Yes, this is Mark Hoadley. Okay. And we're sharing a link tonight. So I appreciate the opportunity to, to make a comment here in the three minutes. Um, I have been uh, raised on Paw Paw Lake and spent well over 50 years of my life there. Uh, right up on Pomona Point, uh, one dock over from the sub subject property. And my concern is, is simply public safety. Um, this is a clear public safety issue. Um, all of the commenters have uh, referenced the high traffic area that is along the shoreline of Pomona Point and the um, ingress and egress of an airplane across uh, the same area where all the young children, mine included, and all the cousins are going back and forth between our family's peers and all of the other people on the landing on kayaks and um, jet skis and swimming and uh, everything else we do in and out of those docks, as well as all the other occupants um, adjacent to this uh, area. Um, trying to take an airplane and land it on a 20 foot platform uh, at any point and that stretch of the lake, I think is extremely hazardous for the following reasons. Um, the plane has only forward thrust. So it has no way to in a missed approach, back up, stop, or turn around and try to get. I have been parking a pontoon boat one dock over or two docks over uh, for my entire life. And I'm here to tell you that even with the slightest breeze, there is numerous times in any, any uh, attempt where I need to throw it in reverse, back up and go around and try it again. It's a very, very uh, thread the needle kind of situation. It's extremely windy with the wind coming down the main bay and um, racing across the point there. And so uh, it scares the heck out of me um, to have you know, an airplane under, under power without the ability to do the same. Um, I think it's an extreme danger to people, but also to the repair. One, one minute left, Mark. Okay, great. Also to the repairing rights of the fixed structures left and right. Um, the, the thought of the airplane sliding uh, left or right as it's approaching the dock and crashing into an adjacent pier or, you know, another structure, I think is a, a very high risk. There's very little room there on each end um, and a missed approach would be catastrophic. Uh, I think it represents, um, you know, a clear um, invasion or impact to the public trust and uh, is, is very dangerous. And for those reasons, uh, I, I am recommending that we deny this permit. Thank you for your comment. All right, next up is Mike Anderson. You're unmuted on our end, Mike. You can unmute yourself and start whenever you're ready. Yeah, right on, Ryan. Hello, Mike Anderson here. Um, first, I was curious, Riley, you're, Opening statement, was that by memory or by cue cards? Because that was quite an outline there. <laughs> so, but joking aside. Yeah, def definitely not memory. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I've, uh, I've been an active user on the lake for the past 50 years. And uh, I actually find enjoyment with the planes activity as uh, maybe I think Jessica or somebody mentioned earlier on the lake. It's been a novel uh, fixture out there for, you know, feels like more than 12 years and, you know, I feel there's no specific safety concerns in there. And and also, I believe many people on this call, both pro and con for the topic, have enjoyed the opportunity to fly with Bill in this plane on, you know, on our on our lake. So, you know, as far as safety concerns or boats or I've heard the word kayakers and stuff before. I mean, uh, you know, Bill's pulled up to my dock and picked me up before safely. And I have five children as well that are usually active and out there. So. Yeah, the skill set and the safety is the highest concern with him as well. Um, and also, uh, you know, with that, I, I do support Bill's application for the turntable and I've read through it all. Or, you know, I would, as I think Kent mentioned earlier, I would support him if he was living next to my house as well. I think it's overall, you know, 
justified. And uh, I think from my experience and watching them over the years, it's been with nothing but great concern for the lake and usage of the lake. So thanks for the time. Yeah, thanks for your comment, Mike. Sure. All right. Next up is uh, John Gibble. John, we're going to unmute you. Here, it looks like you're unmuted on our end. And you can begin when you're ready. Hello. Um, this is actually Kelly Gibble. Um, both John and myself own a property in that bay. We actually, I have been on the lake for over a hundred years with our family, third generation. And I have watched the lake change, saw the traffic change. And I am familiar with the plane. I'm familiar with the family, but times have changed. And as we look at what we're looking at now today, we never had an opinion on whether the seaplane could land or not land. So now that we have changed residency of where that seaplane lands, I think it's very important for us to look how it's handled for not only the bay, but for the entire lake. Um, I do have a concern. I live in Sherwood Shores, the condominium complex right down the lane for approximately seven years. And I could hear that plane when it took off and landed, and it is very noisy. I also had a concern when the plane landed during the day and it's not during unseasoned air timelines. It's during the summer also. It is a treat to see the plane, don't get me wrong. It's a novelty, but is that novelty to the best safety of all of us? I think we need to look at the traffic patterns because we have to go counterclockwise, counterclockwise on that lake and it passes right in front of those piers. And for that pier to extend further out is a concern. I have a concern also for us paddle boarding, kayaking, swimming, and skiing. My vote is no. Thank you. Oh, and the width. So and, the width of the, the per, per, and, and the width also. It's, it's I cannot I could not park in Sherwood Shore. I would take three approaches to come in diag to come in straight forward. The wind is a hassle. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and then uh, Jim Holy, do you have someone else there, or is your hand up from before? We're going to unmute you. Yeah, I was up from before, so I'll I'll yield to somebody else. Okay, thank you. All right, um, so we have Mike and Sue Bond. Uh, you can each make a comment if you're on there, if you'd like. Uh, well, you're unmuted on our end. Yes, this is Mike Bond. And I just wanted to actually clarify a few things that have already been said. <clears throat> now I have Googled float plane instruction in the state of Michigan. And there already has been set up a website for Paw Paw Lake Seaplane in Watervliet, Michigan, under Bill Pater's name with his phone and his address. This does give me a great concern that what is to say in the future, and I'm not saying this is his intent, but what is to say that all of a sudden he does start to take on new instructors for flight training. I am a pilot in training myself right now. I fly at a cloud airport in Bolingbrook, Illinois. I have seen several rookie mistakes made and I have made some myself. And I think that is a huge concern. I also wanted to second the motion about the noise. The Occupational Safety and Health Association says that any noise under 70 decibels is safe. Any noise over 85 decibels is more likely to cause damage hearing. Any noise over 120 decibels can cause immediate harm to hearing. When you Google the Journal of Urban Health, it says that a normal noise range level from 45 to 50, 55 decibels is a typical residential noise level. 
depending on the day and the type and the uh, location of the measurement. Dr. Daniel, Daniel Fink of the American Journal of Public Health states that 85 decibels is not a safe level of noise to the public. And also according to Wikipedia, a float plane can exceed 140 decibels at takeoff, which is more than double of what is recommended as a safe level. Bill, says he, has a, Bill says he does have a muffler on it. I don't know what exactly what his decimal level is, but I would like to say it's extremely loud. And if it's over 85, it's not a safety thing. I just wanted to qualify those two issues. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your comment. All right, the next up is Sherry Holland. Sherry, you're unmuted on our end. And you can hit your select your microphone button to unmute yourself. And then you can make your comment whenever you're ready. Should be at the button at the bottom left hand corner yeah. of your. Can you hear oh, me? Here. Here? Yep, we can hear you. Okay. okay. Um, I just wanted to chime in and um, say that we are in agreement with the safety factors um, concerning this area. We are actually the neighbor just to the east of the proposed permit. And um, our riparian uh, waterway is one foot away from where um, the wing of the airplane would be. And as a mom and a grandma who we host our kids and our grandchildren here, this is our swimming area. And um, with little children, with the noise and the commotion, um, I, I just have a lot of anxiety about the safety factors. And, um, and also this area of the lake is so rough. Um, we will be sitting on our pier and water will come right up over our pier when we're sitting there, it's so rough. And uh, we actually um, sold our pontoon boat this past year because we had a couple of, of incidents due to the rough water where we just weren't able to handle it. Not to say that we might not get another boat, but at this point, we're just taking a break from it and uh, want to try to sit out and, and enjoy the lake. So uh, we are definitely not in favor of uh, permitting this. And I understand that Bill wants to fly his plane and it is a novelty, it's great. It's just that it's so tight right here that I just feel that it would be unwise um, for a number of reasons. So just wanted to chime in. The other quick thing too is um, trying to figure out how, how you fuel the plane. I, since we're next door, we, there are a number of cables and looks like hoses, maybe fuel hoses that go from up next door to our house down to the lake that's been there in preparation, I am assuming, for this um, project. And so um, just a bit uncomfortable about the idea of a fuel line being right next yep. to our plane. One minute, Sherry. OK. Um, and um, I, basically, that's it. We're just, you know, we, we're, we're right there next door. And, you know, it's just, I feel like it's, it's just taking, I don't know. I just, I just don't think that it's a wise thing to do. So anyway, that's about all I have to say. I, we definitely hope you deny this permit. Thank you so much for the opportunity for us to speak about this. Yeah, thanks for your comment. All right, would anybody else like to make a comment? Sherry is the last one with their hand raised at this point. Uh, and again, we do have some phoning callers. If you're a phoning caller, you can select uh, pound two uh, and that'll raise your virtual hand in Zoom and, uh, and you'll be able to, uh, well, unmute you and you'll be able to make a comment that way. Looks like uh, Mike and Sue Bond uh, has their hand raised again. We'll unmute you. I'm assuming Mike has Sue there or someone else who would like to make a comment. Uh, yes, uh, this is Sue Bond. Uh, Mike made a comment before. Uh, I just wanted to bring up that we do have a pontoon boat parked uh, just to the west on the pier. It's a family pier and it's a hard top po pontoon boat. And on most occasions when we bring that in and out, when the winds pick up coming around that corner, 
we have to, as Mark Hoadley said, take a couple, reverse it to pull it in so you don't slam into the pier or use gaffs to hold it to the pier because the wind is blowing it away from the pier, which would be toward Bill Pater's lot. So he he's where he flew in and out before, um, I do believe he was going east to west and he would go right up on shore. Now he's going to be parking in a different, uh, coming in at a different angle. And there are a lot of those crosswinds that come around and could just take that plane with those wings and push it off to the side and he has no way of reversing. So my big concern is the safety issue of his, him parking and bringing that plane in and out where he has no backward um reverse or anything on there due to the winds so thank you i i'm uh going to deny the permit also thanks for your comments sue all right would anybody else like to make a comment tonight and i should also mention that we are going to go through other ways to make a comment um if you'd like to follow up your comment in writing um you're certainly welcome to do that and we will have that information back up but right now, I'm not seeing any other raised hands. So uh, Riley, I would like to invite you to read the closing statement to close out uh, the public hearing portion of tonight. Sounds good, thank you. Thank you all for your comments and your cooperation. We appreciate your interest in the proposed project and that you all took the time to be here tonight. As indicated at the beginning of the hearing, you may submit additional written comments until April 24th, 2022. Following the close of the public comment period, we will consider all of the comments that we received and we will make a decision on the proposed project. Just to remind those that still may want to submit a comment, comments can be submitted via MyWaters, email, or US mail. The hearing is now closed. Thank you again. All right, thank you, Riley. Uh, I'm just gonna repeat this uh, again, just for folks on the phone. Uh, if you wanna mail in your comment, it's Eagle Water Resources Division, Kalamazoo District Office 7953 Adobe Road, Kalamazoo, Michigan 49009 um, through My Waters. And I think this has been mentioned a number of times, but submission number HPD-TEHK-N15W6. As Riley mentioned, this is a uh, public hearing or the public notice will be open for 10 days through April 24th. And then I also have Riley's contact information uh, up here. Uh, her phone number is 517-281-6666. Um, or Walsh R2 is her email, W-A-L-S-H-R2 at Michigan. Dot gov, and that's Michigan spelled out M I C H I G A N. Uh, so Riley can be contacted with additional questions. Um, and then uh, at this point, we'd just like to see if Kyle, if you have any closing comments for us for today. Yeah, I just wanted to speak to a couple of things briefly, um, Ryan. There were, I would say, the vast majority of the comments tonight um, largely pertained to the use of the plane, uh, associated noise, associated safety, and that's fine. Um, we can appreciate that. Um, I do feel obligated to remind everyone that the application that Riley has in front of her, that we have in front of us, is strictly for the hoist structure for that plane. Um, we're not evaluating, uh, evaluating an application for the use of the plane itself, the ability to, to use a plane or an aircraft on Paul Paul, Plate, uh, Paul, Paul Lake um, would by and large not be within the purview of our review. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that that was understood by everyone on tonight. Other than that, um, just want to thank everybody for attending. Uh, we appreciate the, the participation. Yeah, thanks, Kyle. Yeah, thanks for closing it out. Thanks for to all the Eagle staff and everyone who came out tonight to make a comment or ask a question. Um, just a reminder, this recording, this was recorded and it'll be on our YouTube channel, Eagle's YouTube channel in a couple days. Uh, with that, I hope you all have a great rest of your evening. Thank you.